Welcome to the 183rd chapter of the Layman's Journal. And for those of you that are wondering, no, I will not be doing an in-depth discussion on Asaka. I watched the first two episodes last night, and it's just as bad as I thought it would be. It's formulaic, boring, and predictable. Not even the lead actresses seem interested. Nothing about the show surprised me. It's your standard Kathleen Kennedy Star Wars project. Girls are in control, and the only masculine man on the show is a villain. And even he has a girl boss. And apparently lightsabers aren't the lethal weapons they used to be. This is the third time I've seen a woman survive being impaled by one. But it was good seeing Ray Stevenson one last time. Rest in peace to the legend. But I'll keep watching, and if anything worthy of discussion happens, I'll bring it up. But until then, this channel will continue to ignore that show. But I'm here today because I want to make a quick video about Shikari Richardson and NFL running back Joe Mixon. They've had an interesting week. Shikari shocked the world by coming in first place in the women's 100 meter finals. And Mixon was found not guilty of a road rage incident involving a firearm. Now each have been embroiled in their fair share of controversy, but I'm not here to litigate their past actions. I'm here to talk about the recent stances they've made against the media. Shikari appears to have ignored members of the mainstream press, opting instead to only speak to a black journalist. And Mixon released a statement saying he will not be talking to reporters from ESPN, Sports Illustrated, the NFL Network, and the Cincinnati Inquirer on account of the way they portrayed him in their publications. And I think that's something worth discussing because it's relatively new. 10 or 15 years ago, an athlete would not have dreamed about ignoring a particular media publication or refusing to speak to someone who works for them, but it's quickly becoming the trend in the world we live in today. So without further ado, let's get it. I remember 20 years ago when NBA legend Kobe Bryant was accused of violating a woman. The case never went to trial, but he still had to give the media their pound of flesh. So he called a press conference where he apologized to his wife, the Lakers, the NBA as a whole, his fans, even the woman who accused him. And it reminded me of that scene of Game of Thrones where Cersei had to do her walk of shame. 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 Shame because it was everything the media demanded of him. He had to give them what they wanted because back then it was a requirement. If you as an athlete wanted to expand your brand, you had to be in good standing with the mainstream media, the corporate backed media. But in today's generation, politics aside, I don't think we'll ever see anything like that again because this generation doesn't rely on major broadcast news as the previous generations. They still pay attention to the news, but just not in the traditional form that it's presented. For example, they don't watch the evening news, cable news, or read local papers. Not even digitally. I wish I can find it, but I remember watching a video about a story that was referencing a study where the participants were under age 40, and they were asked if they could have just one app on their phone, which app would it be? And most of the respondents chose their favorite social media apps. They chose Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Twitch, etc. But none of them chose a news app. And that's largely because the media has lost their credibility and relevance within pop culture. It started in the 80s and 90s when conservatives were complaining about a left-wing bias in journalism that gave rise to conservative talk radio, Fox News, and alternative sites like The Drudge Report, which was the precursor to news sites like The Blaze and Breitbart. Fast forward to today and you have male advocacy channels here on YouTube dedicated to the advancement of masculinity and airing the grievances of men to the world which was in response to the media sponsoring a one-side monologue against men for the better part of 50 years. But getting back to the sports side of the conversation, for years we've had these jealous little twerps in the media creating false narratives about the athletes they cover, questioning their moral integrity and their commitment towards winning. And there was nothing an athlete could do about it. He or she just had to take it because there was no way for them to rebut what was being said about them. But thanks to social media, all of that has changed because it has given a platform to athletes like Shikari Richardson to craft their own narrative, to tell their side of the story without interruption. Gone are the days when athletes had to kiss the of some journalist or tolerate their BS for favorable coverage. 
because now anyone can start a social media account, bypass the traditional forms of communication, and speak to their fan base without a journalist input. In short, broadcast media and traditional journalism are now obsolete, just like digital music eliminated the need for CDs and music stores, how Amazon destroyed the bookstore, and video and streaming services marked the end of broadcast television and physical media sales. Social media is the death of the major broadcast media as it is now the preferred method for fans to keep up with their favorite athletes. Stars like LeBron James, Stephen Curry, Venus Williams, and Pat Mahomes now have a larger following than the major news broadcast companies that cover them. And within the past few years, we've seen an explosion of athletes creating their own podcasts here on YouTube, and they're all doing exceptionally well. Now those in the press are in denial. They're acting like they don't know athletes have a way to control their own image and create their own narrative without them. They like to think that they're still relevant, still necessary, for an athlete to advance their brand. Like this idiot here, trying to engage Naomi Osaka in a debate, arguing that she needs the press to advance her career. Paul Doherty from the Cincinnati Inquirer. Let's follow up on that last question. Um, you're not crazy about dealing with, with, with us, especially in this format. Yet you have a lot of outside interests that are, that are served by having a media platform. I guess my question is, how do you balance the two? And well, you've said you don't especially like the press conference format. And yet that seems to be the, the obviously the most widely used means of communicating to the media and through the media to the public. I'm actually very interested in that like point of view. So if you could repeat that, that'd be awesome. Uh, the question was that you're not especially fond of, uh, of dealing with the media, especially in this format. You have suggested there are better ways to do it, that, that we'd like to try to explore that. Uh, my, my question, I guess, was you also have outside interests beyond tennis that, that are served by having uh, the, the platform that the media presents to you. My, uh, now keep in mind this mope also writes for the Cincinnati Inquirer the same publication that Joe Mixon called out, a publication that only has 78,000 followers on Instagram, the same platform where Naomi Osaka has 2.7 million followers, with individual posts that have more views, likes, and reactions than their entire page. Yet here he is telling Naomi that talking to him is the best way to promote herself. Now if this guy isn't lying, then he must be a short bus passenger because he's clueless as to how the world works today. And Naomi, being the sweet, cute, feminine, adorable little princess that she is, cried over the way that he talked down to her. But Shakari, even though she's considerably smaller than Naomi, doesn't have a problem telling them to F off. Talk all the shit you want, because I'm here to stay. I'm not done. I'm the sixth fastest woman in this game ever. And can't nobody ever take that from me. In her adorable mousy voice. And the same with Joe Mixon because they understand the power of social media. They know they have more influence than the journalists that cover them. So why bother having a contentious interview with some stupid little reporter when you can just make a post on your social media page that'll get more likes, shares, and comments than anything they'll write about you? So I'm gonna close things right here, but before I go, follow me on my other social media platforms, and if you like this video, please share the link on your social media pages. That, more than anything, would be a huge help in getting the word out. But most importantly, check out the other videos in my library, as I'm sure there's something there you'll enjoy. Here's a preview of my latest work. So Unspeakable is the story about a man named Danny who's accused of having an inappropriate relationship with his girlfriend's 11-year-old daughter named Katie. The movie is told from the perspective of Joe, Danny's live-in girlfriend and Katie's mom. It also includes Joe's ex-husband, Dez, and their son, Ben, but his role is insignificant. The movie is only 45 minutes long and spans a weekend, and it begins with Katie seeing Danny in the buff as he comes out of the shower. Joe's a toe. You're so mean. Fine, I'll get it myself. Mom. Danny. Are you okay, Katie? It's fine. Why are you lying? Please get me a towel. Later, we see Joe taking Katie and Ben to school, with Katie looking up at Danny in the window. So right away in the first two scenes, we're led to believe that something improper is going on. 
and as Joe drives into school, we see Katie sulking as she looks out of the window. She seems depressed. But things get interesting when Joe receives an anonymous text message alleging that something is going on between Katie and Danny. And that's all I have to say about it. What do you have to say about it? Leave a comment in the comment section and let's have a conversation. Okay, so you've heard me say this a million times. So if you like this video, please give it a like and leave a comment in the comment section and share the link on your social media platforms. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. That way you'll get alerts every time I upload new content. This is The Layman's Journal. Thanks for stopping by. I'm out. Hell! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! And while I do appreciate you sharing, subbing, and leaving comments, I'm going to ask that you take another step further in keeping the channel going. I set up a membership plan for those of you who would like to offer further support in the development of this channel. It's not anything expensive or special, I'm just asking for 99 cents a month, which is enough for me to continue doing the work that I do here. Help me! Help me! N Help me! In the future, there will be additional tiers with added benefits, but for right now, I just need your support so that I can cover basic costs. So please, sign up so I can continue bringing you awesome content. This is The Layman's Journal. I'm out.